It's almost Christmas of 2014 and our world is in turmoil. We have riots in the streets of America. Terrorism be continues to rear its ugly head. Most recently this horrific slaughter against a group of school children in Pakistan. Taliban terrorists killed 145 people, 132 of them children. Two New York City police officers were just murdered. And yet we reflect back on that message of the angel given 2,000 years ago, which was glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. Hey, where is this goodwill? Where is this peace that the angels promised? You know, one of my favorite songs this time of the year uh, is I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day. And it's a powerful song. And the story behind it is fascinating. It was written by poet Henry Wadsworth Longfellow in the year 1860. He was at the peak of his success as a poet. Abraham Lincoln had just been elected to the presidency. And there was a great hope in the United States of America. But things turned dark for America and for Longfellow personally. The Civil War began the next year. And then Longfellow's wife died in a tragic accident in her home. She actually burned to death. And as he was trying to save her, he had severe burns on his hands and face. And he wasn't even able to attend her funeral. And in his diary for Christmas Day 1861, he wrote these words, and I quote, How inexpressibly sad are the holidays. Well, in 1862, the toll of war dead from the Civil War was beginning to mount. And in his diary that year, Longfellow wrote these words, quote, A Merry Christmas, say the children, but there is no more for me, end quote. Then in 1863, Wadfellow's son uh, ran away to join the Union Army and he was severely wounded and returned home in December. And so Longfellow had to care for his boy. He was missing his wife and he sat down and put pen to paper and wrote these familiar words. I heard the bells on Christmas Day, the old familiar carols play, and wild and sweet the words repeat, a peace on earth, goodwill toward men. Then Longfellow set the pen down and he thought about the state of the country. And he thought about the war and he thought about the violence and he thought about the pain in his own life. And then he wrote these words. How can I write about peace on earth and goodwill toward men in this war-torn country when brother fights against brother and father against son? So he continues with the song. And in despair I bowed my head. There is no peace on earth, I said. For hate is strong and mocks a song of peace on earth, goodwill toward men. Then stopping, Longfellow gains an eternal perspective thinking of what Christmas is really all about, the birth of the Lord. And then he writes these familiar words. Then peal the bells more loud and deep. God is not dead, nor does he sleep. The wrong shall fail, the right prevail. With peace on earth, goodwill to men. Let's go back to that message of the angels to the shepherds keeping watch over their flocks by night. They said, glory to God in the highest and peace on earth, good will to men. But maybe a different translation would help us to understand for it would better be translated, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among men with whom God is pleased. You see, the only way we're ever gonna have peace on this earth the only way that we're ever going to have this brotherhood that we hope for and long for is when there is a change of heart. And Christ can change the human heart. On Christmas Day, Louis Zamperini's film, Unbroken, is coming out. I think you've probably heard about this film. It's been in process for a long time. It's directed by Angelina Jolie. Unfortunately, the film ends with Louis coming back from World War II and does not tell what to me is the most significant part of the story, and that is his conversion. 
Uh, the film does tell the story of Louis, uh, how he ran from the law as a young boy and was in the Olympics and shot down over the Pacific in 47 days in a life raft and suffered a horrible treatment in the Japanese prisoner of war camp, but then it has him coming home and the story ends. Well, that's not where Louis' story ends because when he came back from that war, he had severe PTSD uh, and he was uh, also a raging alcoholic. In fact, on one night I remember he told me he almost murdered his wife uh, because he was having a dream where he was choking the man who had treated him so horribly, the commandant of the camp where he was held, the man that they called the bird. And so Louis had actually been trying to raise money to go back to Japan to murder this man that had treated him so badly. He was consumed with hatred. So his wife, who was a Christian, uh, had become a Christian actually at the Billy Graham crusade. This was when Billy was just starting his ministry in 1949 in Los Angeles. She invited Louis to the crusade. He didn't want to go. He finally gave in, went one night and never wanted to go back again. And then she said, no, come one more time. And so he did. And he already had plan that he would leave when Billy was having people pray, but Billy said something that caught Louis's attention. Billy said, maybe you've made a promise to God that you have not kept. And Louis remembered on that life raft at sea, and he said, God, if you get me out of this, I promise I'll serve you. Hey, how many of us have prayed prayers like that? And so the time had come. Louis walked down that aisle and gave his life to Christ. But the story continues. His heart was so changed, he told me he was instantly healed of post-traumatic stress disorder. He said it went away. His desire for alcohol went away. And then he found it in his heart to forgive the man who had treated him so badly. He never was able to track down that man they called the bird, but he was able to travel to Japan and actually share the gospel with some of the very guards that had treated him with such cruelty. Only God can change a human heart. And so this is the thing we need to think about. What we need right now is we need forgiveness. We need it in our nation. We need it in our culture. And we need it in our own lives, right? Because maybe in your own family there's turmoil right now. You're dreading the family reunion that is coming soon. Because there's all that friction. Can you find it in your heart to forgive? Even if you can't find it in your heart to forgive, can you just do it as an act of obedience? You see, I think the problem today as we get ready to celebrate Christmas is so often we forget Christ. You might even say in a way we lose God altogether. 